Today we're going to be drawing this fascinating street scene with a couple of people coming down it. It's a really complicated scene but we're going to break it down, we're going to make it easy and if you want to sketch along I'm sure you'll be able to join in, have fun and create an awesome, really fun bit of art as well. I'm going to be doing my normal five-step process. I've got lots of videos about my five-step process for creating ink and watercolour sketches. We're in addition to the normal five steps, just going to be starting with a pencil, or in my case, a watercolour pencil sketch. And that is going to enable us to really clearly break down the key elements of this scene. So it's a five step plus one process today. All you need, if you want to join in, is the reference, which is in the description down below, below the video. Some watercolours. I've got my normal palette here. Um, if you check the supplies reference, uh, the supplies link, sorry, below, you'll find all my watercolours there. I've got a size six round and a sort of about quarter inch or third inch flat brush. And then I've got a fountain pen filled with carbon ink, which is a waterproof ink. You could use any well, any brush really, and you could use any waterproof pen for these techniques. Um, just like that, we're basically ready to go. I should say I'm sketching in a C White of Brighton A5, that's half letter size sketchbook as well. And I've got it landscape because obviously our street scene here is landscape. What you might notice is the street scene is more narrow than the, um, than the book is. So I'm gonna have to keep my scene within itself. Because we're using pencil, we can just do these big gestural lines to find the key, like we said, the key elements of the scene. So we've got this kind of uh, shape coming in. That's basically the wall already blocked in and we can work out the rest of it later. Here we've got this kind of pile of rubble. We can get that sort of blocked in as well. And then we can just start to get, where's our person going? And our person, when we sketch them in with our pencil, can be something as simple as this. We've got basically a rectangle for their body pop where their hands are going to be and then just work out because this this wheelbarrow is a little bit awkward we can kind of work out the perspective of that it doesn't matter if it's not perfect it's just the idea isn't it we're sketching we're trying to get the idea of the scene in and the wheelbarrow kind of falls off the page anyway that's going to let us get the next person in though so we can get their wheelbarrow in which is to be awkward in a different perspective they're kind of holding it differently aren't they there's a wheel of that wheelbarrow that we can see as well. And we'll probably be able to work that out a little bit more later, but I can see I've got the perspective of the wheel wrong. So I'm gonna to have to remember that when we come back to it. Their heads are gonna be on the same level because they're about the same height and it's a flat scene. So if we pop this person's head there, get the idea of the hat. And again, we can kind of just block them in like so. We'll work the rest out with our pen. Over on this side, we've got the edge of our scene here with a few bits sort of encroaching over the top, providing a little bit of awkward perspective again. But if we just get those shapes, those clear shape ideas in, and again down here, we've got all these sort of blue, looks like fabric or windows. If we get those shape ideas, we just mark them in. Here we can just correct a couple of bits and find what do we actually want in the background. So I want these trees, these sort of circles, and I probably want some of this kind of stacked up housing in the background as well. So if we just block in a couple of those little shapes and then we're basically good to go. So we've, we've got the flow of the scene, we've got it feeling about right. And this is one of the easiest ways to start is just to do some very simple shapes. If you're not certain about how the scene's gonna work, if you're not certain about proportions, um, certainly if there are people in, for example, it can be really easy. Uh, or make it much easier, so really simple, really beneficial, just to start with a little bit of pencil shapes. And then we can jump straight in. And we're gonna jump straight in with our ink. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with potentially the more awkward bit, which is these people. So I don't want to overdraw them. That's the biggest um, sort of downfall that I see people making. Um, when you're not doing, a, this isn't a portrait, so we're not trying to get all their features in, we're trying to get the sense of these people and the senses in their shapes, how they're holding things and their height, things like that. It's not in getting all their facial features in, or at least it isn't for me. If it is for you, then work on that, but beware of overdrawing, beware of making them too bold, too detailed and taking away from the rest of the scene and actually 
taking away from them looking human because they just look weird, they look warped, they look too big. And that's very easily done, especially with ink. So just take it gently and don't try your best not to overdo things. I know that is easier said than done, but hopefully you can agree that in a few marks here, we've got basically this person. And we can always come back and we can add more later if we want. What I might add straight away is just some hatching to show this, this is the underside of their hat. And I might add some hatching to show the shadow around their neck. But I don't need to do much else. I don't even need to finish off this side of her body. And then we can move on. And we've got a kind of framework now for how much detail to add to our people. Now remember, this uh, this tire went a bit wrong before, so I need to pay a bit of attention to that. And it's actually almost pointing towards us. That's why I went wrong. I tried to put it on its side. And you get a very small slither going off to the side. And then we can get these kind of uh, more straightforward lines in fairly easily. It doesn't matter if they're exactly right or not. Again, hatch in the bottom. So look, by doing the same hatching in at the bottom of both of these wheelbarrows, we're unifying those structures. Here, the, the handlebars are actually going in front of our person. So I'm going to draw those in first. And then we can show that this person is holding their wheelbarrow in an awkward way, in a way which makes it a little more challenging for us to sketch. Now I'm going to slightly bring the head down. So in the actual picture, it's slightly higher. I'm going to bring the head down to make it fit with the wheelbarrow. And that's basically what's happened is when I've done the wheelbarrow the second time, maybe it's a bit too low, isn't it? But that's fine. I just move the person very slightly to account for that. A little bit of hatching, get the underside of the hat, the, the shade in the neck as well. And then again, simple shapes. It'd be very easy for me to go, ah, doesn't quite look right and keep trying to draw and draw this person. And then I would probably lose the sense that this is a person because there'd be so many dark marks which aren't actually there. Now we can start building these other bits. So we've got this kind of pile of rubble, which is basically a shape, it's almost just a circle. But we can do that circle whilst getting the texture in. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time just getting especially the outline textured to show that this is a kind of loose pile of something. And with that outline texture, we can bring it in a bit. And that starts to just show that this whole thing is a textured object. It's important at some point just to get the shape of this wall in here. And then again, a little simple bit of hatching, this time doing a little bit of horizontal hatching will just help understand that we've got, you see how this vertical and horizontal hatching just shows that we're dealing with something in a couple of different planes. It shows that this is a wall coming down, out and down. It'd be very easy to lose that idea if we didn't just do some very simple bits of hatching there. Coming around, we can get a little bit more shape and shadow into our gravel mound just through a few more of these dots. Don't want to overdo it and then move on so that we're not spending too long in one place. Here we've got our window. You'll notice I haven't popped all these details in so we don't need every detail in in our pencil sketch. This is where we keep the looseness by not drawing everything and then just doing bold lines on top of everything. By doing just the key areas, we, we we get the proportion more accurate, but we can leave lots of things so that we keep that loose feel. Again, just gonna come down. You see how there's lots of wires coming back and forwards in there. So I'm gonna be quite brave about just going backwards and forwards with my own line. Then I need to make sure the wall comes underneath this edge here. And then in the background, which I didn't mark in, is a little sort of another mound of sand or something which you can just see coming over this shoulder as well. What I might do is just gently hatch that in. So again we're trying to unify ideas. So here this hatching, if I just continue it everywhere I see the sand, hopefully it will unify that block, that object. It will show that this object continues here, 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 instead of us having to overdraw it and spend too long on it. Again we've got a little detail here which is the um, the door and you can see it's not quite in the right place that's okay just going to move it to make a bit more sense in my scene um, and then a bit of hatching to get that darkness got another sort of strut above there and above this is a quite a key bit which again shows what's happening with this roof by getting these lines on the wall these lines coming off 
you show just how much this roof is overlapping. Underneath, I might just do some simple hatching just to continue that idea. Just nice and simple and quick. And then just some vertical hatching again. Like down here, this vertical hatching just shows where the planes of our objects are changing. Got another window, which is kind of here. Just let that kind of disappear out. There's a wire coming out, which makes a nice loose line. A little bit more of these marks, just to, again, we're unifying this whole area, making it all feel the same. If we want, actually, let's do it now. We could do this textured area of the roof. It's that corrugated a bit of roof, isn't it? I don't want to overdraw it, so I'm, I need to be quite gentle about it, um, but just get the idea of texture in. Up here, something I feel more confident doing are these kind of stacked up buildings. We just need to simplify them. There's so much going on everywhere that just having these buildings there, simple, is fine. You can see, again, like even with my initial drawing, because this is so complicated, she's moved a bit forward. Maybe I should have brought this line a bit back and that would have fixed everything. This is the nature of sketching with ink. And for me, it's it's fine to make these little mistakes. And you know, if I wanted to do something perfect, I would do it on a big piece of paper. I'd spend a bit longer and um, I'd probably enjoy myself less as well. So I'm happy to just have these little errors I notice along the way and then have the fun of working out, well, how can I correct things? So to correct this one, I've kind of added another bit of building off to the off to the right. Then we can just get these loose swirls of um, these trees in the background. Get these little uh, bits of wall. I like the kind of baubles on the top. Um, they kind of, again, show a nice bit of perspective going back. Get the rest of this fence going back. Let's add in, actually, there's this nice roof be a nice punch of colour potentially wouldn't it that comes in about there and then down the side I'm going to create some nice and quite bold lines because this this is going to really envelope our scene it's just providing that kind of frame it pushes everything over and just again nice bold lines get these funny shapes in just make it feel a little bit abstract as we get off to that side I'll get the underside clearly hatched nice and dark a little bit of faithful representation of what is going on in the scene and then we've got funny bits we've got this like a uh, bucket in the background that's nice to add in we could add more people if we wanted just some simple people in the background something like that just to fill this space a few marks here as well and now that is my first sketch done nice and loose found loads of mistakes along the way, but we just rolled with it. We rolled with those mistakes and we've got something which resembles the scene, which has the essence of the scene. Now it's time for step two, loose colours. I'm going to start with this brush. So a nice flat brush, quite, it's not huge, but it's quite big for the size of paper. And I'm going to start by kind of pooling some colour down the back here. We can see down here is less important. So I'm going to basically get a nice blue sky because you can see a touch of blue sky so this is some cobalt blue and I'm just going to let that come down and I've been using a scarlet lake a sort of reddish orangish colored uh, pencil there so as it comes down that red and blue will sort of mix and become purpley or you can see it's becoming a slightly neutral gray because it's on the orange side of red and with that we have kind of got a shadow coming in under our scene which is great because as we get to this side, that's exactly what we have is a lot of shadow and a lot of lovely rusty red. So for that rusty red, I'm going to mix up a little bit of, I've got reds and I've got uh, quinacridone siennas and things all going on in the top of my palette here. And here I'm just going to start doing some brush strokes. I get that painterly feel uh, to my painting here. Painterly is where you can kind of see how it was created. You can see those marks being put in. What we might do is we might leave it painterly or we might more likely we'll probably start blending it and flowing it together a bit. It certainly we will in places like here. We'll just blend and flow that together already. Um, but we'll also try and leave some of those kind of brush stroke like marks. And just fill that up. Again, we've got some nice kind of shadows coming in un under the top. So let's 
use a shadow. I've got a bit of indigo there. And I can lift that shadow with some cobalt. And again, just let everything blend and flow. And yes, this is very loose at the moment, but that's fine. This is the first wash of color. It's supposed to be loose. It's supposed to flow together. And after this is dried, we'll be able to be more specific. We'll be able to bring things back under control and we'll be able to restructure with our pen as well, create the scene um, that is sort of emerging in front of us. Just gonna do a few more touches, get a little bit more depth in here, a little bit more depth in some of these shadows back here as well. And perhaps just a couple of more sort of brush stroke marks in this otherwise quite loose wall. Maybe a little bit more warmth actually up the top here in this shadow as well. Warmth is like adding sort of those reddy orange colours, those colours which you find in the sun or in warm reflections. One other bit I've missed out, of course, is we've got a lovely blue in here. So I'm actually going to do that fairly specifically. And then we can mirror that blue across into some of these shapes where you can see poking in. We've got, I'm not sure if they're shutters or if it's a shop or something like that, but we've got these lovely blues and we'll do one more blue even though it's not blue i'm going to change the scene to fit what i want to do with it and there we go now we can just let that dry and it looks a bit wild at the moment when it's dried it will look softer and we'll be able to come in with some more specific colors and really we'll be able to make it our own scene and there we go do you see how much less scary this looks now that it's dried instead of being punchy and weird and too over the top it's really softened down. Now something I forgot to do is pop a little clip on and on a sketchbook having a little clip or even having two clips just to keep that paper tight really helps control the bending and the warping. Sketchbook paper tends not to be quite as heavy and um, high quality as non-sketchbook paper. That enables it to be easy to create into bound pages to carry around. Um, but with a couple of clips it tends to work pretty much just as well. Now I'm going to swap over to a smaller brush. So this is a size 6 round brush. And now we're not painting everywhere. What we're doing is we're picking out some bolder colours. Step 3 of, of my process is always bolder colours. And we're finding those more specific marks. Not too specific. We don't, don't want to fall into that other trap. The trap where we overdo things and overdraw but quite specific, specific enough to start bringing a bit more shape to our scene. So trying to get, for example, some darker shadows in places, a bit more strength to our indigo. We can always come back again if we need to. So we don't need to finish it off in this step, but we're working towards finishing it off, if that makes any sense at all. Coming down, what I'd like to do is get a little bit more warmth in here because if we just get a nice contrast between this warm red structure, the wall, and these greens and blues in the distance, that will hopefully just separate it out a little bit more. We've got some of those nice painterly marks already in there. I'll just do a few more. And what we'll do, a few of these marks, and then a really useful skill to learn, or to be aware of if, you, uh, if you're not aware of it, is the idea of softening marks. So if I just clean my brush and dry it off slightly, then I can come and I can soften some of these brush strokes that I've made. And that leaves me some of that idea, but it also leaves it flowing a little bit. So we're not, hopefully not uh, overdoing things too much. Gonna come back in whilst it's wet. I'm just angling the sketchbook up a little bit whilst it's wet. Come in with another little layer of that darker colour. We do the same actually in these windows. Underneath what have we got? We've got this lovely texture here. So I'm going to actually cover my page and do loads and loads of splashing. Again this is all using just indigo, nice deep dark blue. And you see how that splashing is going to suggest some of the texture of this pile of gravel. But we can also come in and just use that softening technique. So now we get that texture in places, we get soft areas in other places. We can then come in even more and do a bit of wet on wet. And the last thing I'm going to do, and this may not be something you enjoy or it may not be something you can do, it depends on the paints you've got. I use a little bit of Lunar Black. Lunar Black is a granulating paint. So when it dries, 
it leaves lots of granules and that, that leaves a very sort of dotty pattern, a bit like gravel, a bit like this pile. So by using that paint, um, it will hopefully become obvious by the end that this uh, pile, whatever it is, this gravel, has a very granular sort of sandy appearance. And there we go, so a range of different techniques used to create hopefully something quite fun there. Again, you can probably see that things are building up and feeling messy again. They felt quiet, now they're feeling messy. This is going to dry softer. Just remember, it's always going to dry softer. Watercolours dry a lot softer. Um, but also, this time, we're going to be coming back with our pen and restructuring. So we'll find a lot of structure in some of this sort of chaotic mess. <laughs> and I find the chaotic mess really fun. I find it really interesting to work out the scene from whatever happens. Down here in this street, it just feels like there's some blue reflections coming in there. So I'd like to make that evident in, in how I apply some colour before also coming back in with a bit more of this dark colour. And also there's a bit of like warmth in the middle. So I'm going to add that little bit of warmth. And I'm not sure if there's anything else we really need. Maybe one more thing. We've only really got this red here. So I'm going to just get this roof, make that roof red. And I just see we'll have to finish off our building there. And we've got a little bit of red here as well and just here. So I'm going to now just have that, these ready warm colours, just spreading a little bit across the page. Maybe a few splashes will also help balance things out a little bit. What else can we do? A few little blue splashes maybe. I'm purposely leaving the people white at the moment. And we'll have a look, when we've restructured, we'll have a look if we want to add colour to them in the final step or if we actually think they make a really great punch of negative space. And that will be a very personal decision for me, for you, for whoever's sketching. So we are back and we are pretty much dry. And like I said, we're going to come back now and restructure our image. And restructuring is where we look like what's happened with our colours, what's happened with our shapes, and where can we add just a bit more of our bold ink, a bit of a really dark line, um, a few more bits of hatching perhaps, and really start telling a bit more of the story we want to tell in our scene. So for example, we can come down and we can find these edges. What I don't want to do is make them too straight. So I want to not overdraw still, not do too much. I might, to prevent me doing too much, just make sure I connect a few bits and, and just keep lines loose and leave a few bits unsaid as well. Up here we've got this, which I'll leave unsaid a bit. Down here, this little step is definitely key in explaining what's happening. And then we've got our gravel. And here I can come around, I can accentuate some of that texture. I can find these little dots which have escaped. So we've got a little dot here. I can just come back and collect that with my pen. Coming round inside, I can just find these areas of light and dark and accentuate them. And in doing so, hopefully accentuate with it the kind of sense of light and dark, the sense of shadow shape and texture. And I'm doing this all actually at the moment in one line. And that's because I think the colours are quite busy. So I want something very simple to come on top and go, ah, let's just simplify and connect everything. Here we've got our wheelbarrow. Now this needs a really bold line for me because it's right at the front and it needs to jump out. It needs to jump in front of what is going on, all this other sort of busyness. And a bold line will tend to come forwards in your image. So as we make this bold, as we make our outline of our person really nice and bold, and I'm doing this all with my fountain pen, just by pressing a little harder. But hopefully, as we make these outlines a little bold, hopefully not rigid, just bolder, more certain, you'll agree that our person kind of jumps out at us. And we can start adding just a little bit more detail, like separating out the legs, suggesting a hand, and there we go. Get that other um, handle of the wheelbarrow in. And again, we can increase the depth of that shadow inside. And is that person jumping out at us? I think a little bit more, they are. I'm gonna do the same to this person. We don't wanna be as bold here. This person needs to be behind the other one, right? but we still want to explain them a bit more than what we've done so far. Or I say we, what I've done uh, 
because all these mistakes are certainly my mistakes. Can't be blaming you for them. And here we go. This wheel, which actually is working quite well, just because we took a little bit of time to think about it. All this awkward perspective has actually done all right. It's not done a terrible job at all. Back here, we just do some hatching to pull apart again, get our person separate from the background, especially where that background has been left white by us. That will just help pull our people again, hopefully even more forward. And now, whilst we are continuing to restructure, this is where we can start thinking about how much detail do we want our people to have. And we can start doing a bit of hatching with our pen, for example. And do you see how that simple hatching just separates out their layers? It puts certain parts in the background, certain parts in the foreground. We could do simple lines. That kind of suggests the, the face and the eyes. Don't have to do more than that. We can just get this person's legs, which I forgot about. I did have little lines for them. We can get them as little dark marks. Doesn't have to be that explicit what they are. And there we are. We'll decide if a punch of color, perhaps actually that's what we need to do. Just a punch of color on them and nothing else. Just a little punch. Up here, a little bit more again, just to explain and to respond to these loose colors. We can find some new trees where these colors have flown or flowed, I should say. Uh, they didn't fly anywhere, they, they just flowed. There's our house, I said we'd finish off that roof. And then we can double down on this really bold line, just give it an extra little edge, which hopefully again, will just separate things out. And again, why not double down on some of our hatching? And there we go. Same here, make it really dark, show it's in the foreground. Now the one thing which I think is really missing a, a nice touch is this. This just isn't working for me. But I, I hope that we can we can get somewhere with it, just with a few extra marks to bring a bit more of that shape. And I think what's happened, I think the reason it's not working very well for me is because back here I got this line wrong. That's great. I've I've worked out something I could change next time if I wanted to redo this scene. That's a really great use of a, a sketchbook scene. It's also not a huge issue. So although I'm not perfectly happy with how this is going, it's not a huge issue. It doesn't really ruin the sketch. It's just a, an interesting learning point and something to be more aware of for me next time I'm sketching a, a challenging scene or if I wanted to do this as a more finished piece, for example. Sketching, of course, can be a really great way to just warm up for a bigger sketch or for a watercolour or acrylic painting or something like that. Anything else to do? I think, I think that's enough structure. I think what we can safely do now is just move and add those uh, extra finishing touches, which I keep talking about. So I'm going to come back with my smaller brush and let's just find first some things in, in the walls, in the background. We can just apply some some more of these marks. Do you see how this wall is filled with these kind of linear marks? So we can safely make this busy. I'm not using dark paint here. I'm using quite a light transparent paint. Um, just the same reds and quinacridones I was using before. And these will kind of glaze and layer over. We can then come up here and I hope just softly increase the amount of shadow underneath and hopefully fix some of that error that I made up there, which I was talking about. Maybe we can then move forward and just start a tiny bit of shape in these wheelbarrows. I don't want to overdo these wheelbarrows and I don't want to overdo the people. So then all I want to do maybe is just some little punches of colour. So she's got a kind of blue jacket. So let's just get a couple of bits of blue. Her hat is very white and not that exciting. Underneath it though, there's a couple of red. So maybe just a punch of red coming around. Our person in the background actually has uh, rather a red stripe across them, so they can get a red stripe, um, which is the same as her hand. So let's just unify some of these colors as well. And then maybe just a little bit of an orange under the hat this time. And maybe that's enough. Something we haven't used elsewhere, which I just noticed we've only got greens in the background. So maybe just a touch of green in our people can kind of um, unify the greens across the scene and also just make them a little bit more interesting. Now with that, I actually think there's nothing else I would add immediately with the watercolors. 
But there's a couple of bonus things we can do with something optional. So I'm going to just grab some Posca pens. Now, if you don't know what Posca pens are, they're acrylic markers, and they basically apply a little line of acrylic paint. And acrylic paint is opaque, so it will sit on top of our watercolors. And that's going to allow us, if I just change up the colors in a few places, just to apply either some bold lines. I could apply some really bold lines with this black, for example. That might work well in our people, just again, in a couple of places to really beyond what my fountain pen can do to really intensify how far forward our people feel. So that's one option, one use for them. The other thing would be to apply little highlights. So coming across here, we've got all these wires. So I can apply these kind of wire effects and bring them into the middle so I can get these wire-like lines coming across. And then I'll just change up the color and just get some more continuous wires. And I think so my idea here is to kind of make this as messy as it is in the actual scene. It's quite a confusing tangle of things going on. We've got a, a pole in the background here, which I haven't added in yet, but will come in very soon. We can lead all those wires back to that pole. There's no, there's lots of blues and reflections there. There's no reds, but for the sake of creating something a bit interesting, I'm going to add in some reds. Use these reds again, perhaps on our people, just to provide a little bit of highlight, maybe on their hands, maybe highlight their face a little bit. And then we can come back in perhaps with our black Posca, perhaps with our fountain pen. And now we can get this sort of totem pole, I was going to call it, but it's a telephone pole, isn't it? Or an electricity pole. I think it's a telephone pole, most, most likely. We can get that in the background. We can have these wires just coming a little bit more across our scene. And there you go. And I think with that, I will call that finished. And I think my, my chaotic wires have solved some of that roof. They've hidden it. Um, and in the reference, it is hidden. So it kind of allows the scene to feel a little bit more um, realistic. It gets rid of my mistake a little bit. Uh, it also, these highlights on the people I think have worked. I think they could also have worked being left white. There's always something else I spot that I want to do in here. I spotted this person, just I want to finish off their side there. Maybe the same here. Um, but there's always things you can keep adding. So you need to at some point just, just stop and move away. I can do a couple more lines in my fountain pen, having said that, of course. And finish off the bottom of that telephone pole. And there you go. Now I really must call it done. So there you go, a slightly longer sketch of an awkward scene, but we got over the problems had a bit of fun and created some chaos to control what we've done. If you enjoy this, if you enjoy my things, do like, subscribe, leave a comment. And also, if you want to share on Instagram what you've done, if you've joined in on this scene, then please do. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.